Okay, let me see if I've got this straight. I've got one weak steel ingot, one pig iron ingot. I weld them together and that gives me one black high carbon steel ingot. Two ingots in, one ingot out. Do you feel cheated? I feel cheated. Hey folks, welcome back. And if this is your first time here, then welcome aboard. So if you watched the previous episode, I said there that uh, if I wanted to make blue steel, which I'm in no rush to, then I would need to get some sphalerite. Uh, but uh, then a little later, I realized that I do actually need sphalerite even to make red steel. But fortunately, I don't need very much of it, so I don't have to mine. I can just pick up these surface deposits, and that should be plenty, especially given how many there are. Wow. This must be a big, big deposit. But, uh, yeah, it's probably enough for me already. And that is going to be the focus of today's episode, at least initially. Might have some time left over afterwards. But uh, to make, oops, make red steel. And from that, make a red steel bucket. And then we'll finally be able to move water source blocks around. Wow, there is like just a, <laughs> I don't know that I would ever need to actually mine this stuff. Wow. Uh, that's more than good enough, so I'll head back home and meet you there and we can get started on the process. Oh, one other thing is uh, <laughs> I've uh, run out of, I ran out of arrows because of all the ones I used shooting at hyenas in previous episodes. So I need more feathers and I don't yet have any chickens and I'm, or I'm not raising any ducks, but what I can do here is just shift if I can get close enough to them, keep them in range, shift and right click on them and that'll pluck a feather off of them i'm pretty sure it has to be an empty hand though so i'll come over here and whoops there we go it does i'm pretty it does damage them though and so I have to be careful that I don't do it too often because I think I can kill them. <laughs> Which kind of makes sense. I mean, if you tried life plucking a chicken or a duck, uh, probably kill the poor thing. So not, not the uh, most humane thing to do to the ducks, I suppose, but uh, it's better than killing them to get the feathers. Okay, I will meet you back at the house. Okay, so we're going to make red steel and it has four components black steel rose gold brass and regular steel so i've already gone ahead and made up all of the uh, black steel we're going to need that's it here and the regular steel as well um uh, i did that off camera because i've done it in previous episodes so you can reference back to those if you're interested in it. so the for the rose gold and the brass we haven't done those before so i'll go through them quickly so first up we'll do the brass uh, that's what we needed the zinc for so the brass just uses copper and zinc and you can see the proportions there um, all i need are three ingots worth so 300 units of brass is what we're going to make and for that i will need a mere 30 uh, zinc or sphalerite which is the ore the zinc's going to come out of so as you can see I collected 32, 40, 40 odd of these just off of the surface, and I only really need three. So like I said, it was gonna be plenty. I didn't need to, I don't need to mine it. And for the copper, I'm gonna need 270. Okay, so for the copper, I can use my six rich copper, which give me 210. And for the poor copper, which gives me another 60 for a total of 270. Oh, my lights are going out. Come over here. 
grab the crucible. Actually, I should get the uh, charcoal into the forge first, since it's easier to do it now before the crucible's on top. There we go. Put the crucible down, throw in our copper, and we're going to have to wait for that to melt, and then throw in the last of it and the sphalerite. So I'll bring it back in when we get to that point. And that was the zinc. Oh, we already even have brass, really, at this point. But it's not quite the amount I need. So wait for the last of this copper to go in. Okay, and that gives us, should be our 300 units of brass. Oh, yeah, in fact, it says it right there. Now, I don't actually need it in the form of ingots, because it's all just going to get mixed into the into the stew for the red steel. So let's see if I can put a small vessel in there. Will it drain in there? Oh yeah, that actually works. Okay, that's cool. Oh yeah, what happened when I was making up the um, the black steel, oh, it's gone now, but you notice it said here that it had uh, 300 out of 3,000. I didn't realize that there was a limit on how much this could hold, uh, that it could only hold 3,000. And that's 30 ingots worth. And I was trying to make up 32 ingots worth of uh, black steel. And so what happened is I lost a bunch of, what was it, steel? Yeah, it was a bunch of a bunch of steel ingots that I had added in. And they just got lost because I was adding them to an already full crucible. So that's great. We have 300, or 300 units of brass in there. Now let's see, will this let me put them in here to keep them warm? Yes, all right. I'm going to need more charcoal as we go along here. Okay. So that's looking up. Uh, next on our list is the rose gold. And for that, we need copper and gold. So let's get that up on board. Again, I only need three ingots worth, 300 units worth. So um, you can see there the percentages we need to get within for rose gold and so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do 90 units of copper and 210 units of gold so six of these rich gold give us our 210 and for the 90 copper six of these poor copper give us the 90 we need for that that and once again we get to wait for a while ah, there goes the gold it melted halfway through orange orange sheet and the copper we know has to get up to bright red or the very beginning of orange i'm not sure but we'll get there yeah so the copper melts at the pretty much the top end of orange gold melts at two star orange and the copper melts at four star orange and there goes the last of the copper so same deal we'll use a vessel to hold the rose gold since we don't know that works. And keep it warm in the forge, which probably needs some more charcoal anyway. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Don't want it to go out on us. That will slow things down. Okay. So now on to the red steel itself. For that we're gonna need uh black steel and steel. Uh looking at the percentages there, I wanna end up with twenty ingots of red steel. So 14 of those will be used to make the anvil and then two of them for a red bucket or for a bucket and then another, I'll probably want at least two buckets. So, so let's go grab that. And actually first I need to eat. What's going to go bad first? Five days, 104 to, well, I guess it's pretty clear which is going bad first. The gooseberries. Yeah, we're well into spring at this point. Um, if you watched the previous episode, I was saying, oh, we'd be back here forging in the snow through winter. Well, it took me all of winter and then some just to get all this stuff done. Okay, uh, so I'm going to need 10 of these. And yeah, let's get them going. Uh, the other thing I'll need is, so the rose gold and the brass, 
Uh, we've got 300 units of each of those sitting in the vessels in the forge, so that's great. Uh, I'm going to need 400 units of steel, so that's going to be four steel ingots. I was hoping to have a few extra left over for making tools out of. Uh, but then I ran into my little problem here where I ran over the uh, 3,000 limit of the crucible. Okay, again, it's going to take a little while for these guys to get up to heat, and then we're going to have to whale away on the uh, bellows to get them fully up to temperature so that they'll melt. Uh, one thing I want to point out is you'll notice we have ingots in here, and they're heating up. So when we want to do some smithing on the anvil and we need to heat things up previously we were limited to just the five slots that were in the forge itself right and if you got to do a lot of welding which is exactly what happens here like when we make the blue steel we're going to have, or sorry red steel we're going to end up with weak red steel out of this process and then we're going to have to weld it to black steel so all this stuff has to get heated up together, and that's a lot of ingots, right? They're going to have to be heated up together. Well, you can also we can also heat them up here in the crucible. As long as we don't hit the bellows, it will never get hot enough for these to melt. So we can so this gives us an extra nine slots that we can heat ingots up in. So that's kind of cool. So that means the five slots in the forge plus the nine slots here will have fourteen slots. Um, uh, that we can use for heating things up when we have the crucible on here. So that was kind of a nice discovery for me. Okay, this set of ingots are up to temperature now. That's as high as it's going to get without a bit of help from the bellows. So I go away on them for a bit. And get them up to brilliant white. One more. Boom, there we go. Okay, now we can dump the rest of the stuff in, and same deal, now we gotta let it all warm up. <laughs> so actually what I could have been doing, I never even thought about that, I mean I just talked about it here. Well, it doesn't matter, I had too many ingots anyway, because I, I want to keep these guys warm. But I could have thrown some of those ingots on here to get them already started warming up. But I have five ingots I gotta warm up, and I only have three three slots here available. So anyway, I look at it, I'm going to have to wait for another round of heating here. So I'll bring you back when we're ready for it. Oh, it does actually do a danger here on the black steel ingot. Interesting. Oh, so that I guess that, yeah, that means that the black steel ingot has a slightly lower melting point. Like one or two more stars up would cause the black steel ingot, ingot to melt. So black steel melts before brilliant white then, whereas the steel doesn't melt until brilliant white. Cool. Anyway, we'll see that now as, uh, so we should see this guy go before he hits brilliant white. He gets to just regular white, one star, two star, three star, four star, and he's gone. Whereas these guys have to get to brilliant white before they'll melt. And now we have unknown alloy. Okay. So we have our last two components that we need to add here. So hopefully I can just pour them in from here. Yeah. Not very fast, but at least it's working. Oh, it won't even start. It on the <laughs> so it basically unloads one container at a time. I guess that's uh, the safe thing to do. Uh, they talk about in the wiki about how it does th some of the stuff at a slow pace so that you can more finely tune the percentages so like if you're emptying you only want to empty part of the vessel you have time to pull it out of there before it's too late i don't think there's any way of speeding it up though i mean you get to see it sped up through the use of the magic of video editing but uh i have to sit here in real time and wait for it that's not a problem i can sit here and observe the beauty of my little farm oh yeah you can see the have a quick look here 
You can see the cherry trees are in full blossom. And actually the peach trees are too. We have a little baby cow wandering around with some baby sheep and some baby sheep that have turned into grown sheep. Oh, I've got stuff to do on the farm. But let's get through this red steel first. I want my red steel buckets. Okay, he's done now and now it's emptying the brass out. So as soon as this gets to 15%, we should have ourselves uh, red steel. If I've done all my calculations correctly, maybe we should have a drum roll here. Oops, that woke the cat up. And we're into the home stretch here. Seven, eight, nine, boom. Red, weak steel. Awesome. Okay, now this time I do want this stuff to be in ingots molds. Oh, it's not hot enough. I do want these as separate ingots because I need to weld them. And you can't melt, weld little puddles of steel. So this is going to take a little while for me to get through it to drain all these out. And I only have, I think, 15, uh, 15 ingot molds anyway, so I'll have to wait for... Well, these have already cooled solid, so I'll be able to reuse them pretty quickly. Be able to use them right away, in fact. But it'll take a little while, so as usual, I will spare you the pain by uh, just fading you out and bringing you back when I'm all done here. And that's the last one. So we want to let this cool down so it's not quite brilliant white anymore. And while it's doing that, I can grab some of these out of here. Oh, lost a mold. Can I make myself some, some more molds? I've lost quite a few during the course of all this metallurgy. It's cool enough now that these won't melt. So I can throw them back in here, whoops, to keep them warm. And I'm going to have to weld them. With black steel. So what have I got? I've got three and two. Uh, three, four, seven, two, and seven. So I got seven of each in here warming up and get them up to welding temperature. Uh, see what I mean? That's much better. So I can basically warm up, you know, 14 ingots. So, so the stuff I'm going to weld together, I can have my seven, I can have seven pairs warming up instead of before just down here where it would have been two and a half pairs so that's much better that speeds things up quite a bit but once again we have to wait for stuff to heat up so i'll bring you back okay so these are up to welding temperature grab one of each go over to our anvil and if i can get my mouse roll to work weld them together and that now gives me a red high carbon steel ingot which I then have to work. To get our first red steel ingot. And now we're going to throw that back in the forge. Or in the crucible rather. Grab another pair. Do the same thing with it. If I can get... I really need to get a new mouse. This mouse wheel is just driving me bonkers. Okay, this guy is still weldable, but let's get him another dot notch up. And now we take our two red steel ingots and we weld them into our first red steel double ingot. And then we throw a few more guys on there to warm up and then take our next pair and just keep repeating this until we have the uh, seven double ingots we need to make an anvil. So you don't have to sit through that. I'll bring you back when I get there. Okay, I have the seven double ingots that I need to make the uh, the anvil out of. 
And over here I'm keeping warm two other double ingots that I'm going to use for making the, uh, the buckets. And then I have two others here that I haven't, I've just got in case I want to make something else out of red steel. Now I'm just going to demonstrate something that I haven't shown before. Um, so I've got these two, they can't stack because they're different temperatures and I can't stack them on the ground because you can't do that while they're hot. Uh, but what I can do is put them into a barrel of water and that will cool them off. And now they're stackable and if I want to, I could put them on the, put them down on the ground somewhere. So that can be handy at times, uh, especially like if you're forging a bunch of stuff and like when I was forging the, what was it, uh, 30 odd, 32 odd uh, black steel here, it was filling up my inventory with hot ingots. And so I could just run out to the barrel there, cool a bunch of them off and then stack them up on the floor and free up inventory space. Okay, so last thing we want to do here, well, no, actually, the next thing we want to do is come over here and do our usual eye beam pattern. And we have a red steel anvil. Ooh. Um, this is the wrought iron anvil. Yeah, I don't see me wanting to use that for anything else anymore. So down goes the red steel anvil. We'll move our hammer in flux over. And now we've graduated up to red steel. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I'll do with that anvil, but we'll figure it out eventually. Okay. Now uh, take one of these guys here. These ingots, double ingots rather here and i should be able to make a sheet out of that hit 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 yeah okay there we go there's our single sheet and now we can make a red steel bucket what's that oh it's all bends eh can i just get there with nothing but bends no of course not Oh, it wasn't that hard though. Red steel bucket. And I'm going to make one more just because I want two of them. And there we have my two red steel buckets. And that means that now, uh, okay, let's close you up. Um, whoops, X. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. I can't. Oh, I'm overburdened. I got too much stuff off with me. All right, uh, let's unload the anvil. Uh, let's move the barrel out into the barrel house. Get these two guys out of here. And now, come outside. source block. Yay! I have my permanent pool back again. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, look, I'm thirsty. Oh, should I rush outside and... Oh, no, I don't have to go outside to drink. I can drink from inside now. Mm, mm, delicious water. <laughs> ah, feels so good to finally have that done. All right, I'm going to Catch my breath here, and then we'll see what other business we can get up to. Okay, I've got the uh, animals all sorted out, but the last thing I want to do here today is try and fix this problem of, uh, of the escapes and the cross-species fraternization. So I think what I need to do here... Uh, my working theory is that what's... Oops. Is that what's going on is that the little ones... So when they're small, they can escape, they can go through the fences. And that the only reason I'm seeing adults out here is because I've been a delinquent farmer 
and I've <laughs> let the little ones stay outside so long that they've grown up to be adults. So that's my, my kind of working hypothesis here. So I'm going to try putting what should be an impregnable line of dirt down here. Now, they will be able to climb up on the dirt, but only the adults will be able to do that. And so if it's the little ones that are escaping, they can't get up that high anyway. So hopefully this will work to keep them in. Let's see. It's not as pretty. I would have liked to have just been able to double up the fencing, but I mean, if, if the problem is that the little ones can escape through the fencing, then doubling it up isn't gonna make any difference. The reason I put them all in before building the fencing is just because it's going to be harder to move them around once the, fen once the extra high fencing is up. I guess if I wasn't such a cheapskate with the fencing, the other thing I could have done is just built higher fencing outside of the existing one and then taken down the existing fencing. Yeah, that would have been smart, huh? Yeah, maybe next season I'll think of that. <laughs> So I just have to keep working my way around like this, or so I believe. So I'll bring it back when it's all done and you can gaze upon my, well, really my hideous concoction here, but it's the best I can think of at the moment. Okay, so that's it completed, and almost all of the baby sheep ex escaped, but none of the baby cows, which is a surprise. Anyway, so now I just have to round up these sheep and get them in, and I'll figure out how to do that off camera. Anyway, I hope that you had a good time watching me fight with sheep, and I hope to see you back for the next one. Bye.